Well, we got some details today, and we got plenty to talk about over the course of the next hour. Shereen Williams, Mike Florio, the show is PFTPM. Originally, the amended complaint in the Brian Flores litigation was expected for Friday, April 8. It was filed today. Two new plaintiffs, two new teams, actually three new teams, because Brian Flores has added another team to his claims, and we're going to break it down. And, Shereen, it doesn't feel as monumental as the first filing, but we've now taken one minority coach who has done what I think the NFL believed would never be done, and we've tripled that number. And I can't help but wonder whether or not others, as more and more join the cause, will decide there is both strength and safety in numbers and decide as we learn more about this, as we hear more about this, as we get more comfortable with this reality, to join in the fight. I think at this point, Mike, you're going to be more surprised if more black coaches don't join this suit than if they do. I mean, I would expect many more to join it because you're right. There is a safety number. You look at a guy like David Culley, who lasted one year with Houston and the Texans are now on this complaint. Maybe he decides to join this suit. That makes sense. But I'm with you. I I think there's going to be more to join this suit. It doesn't seem as monumental. I mean, we knew it was coming because you had reported that previously. But the first lawsuit, Mike, that's when it really hit the fan. And now it's just more and more and more and more things are coming out. And the light is now shining on this huge problem for the NFL. Let's start with, because there's two new plaintiffs, Steve Wilkes, who was the Arizona Cardinals coach for one year. And then Ray Horton, who was a candidate to be the head coach of the Tennessee Titans in 2016. The job went to Mike Malarkey. Let's start with that one. And a question that some may have. How can Ray Horton wait six years to file this lawsuit? How can the statute of limitations have not run? I think the argument will be that Horton didn't become aware and didn't believe that his interview was a sham, didn't believe that the determination that they would hire Mike Malarkey was pre-made until he heard Mike Malarkey. And what I think is an incredibly jarring, honest, courageous comment, Mike Malarkey appearing on a podcast September of 2020, the Steelers Realm podcast, Malarkey, a former player I believe and definitely coach with the Steelers asked a very open-ended question gave a very specific answer here it is oh Mike if you could turn back the clock where would uh yeah I'd probably hate these questions but would there be anything during your coaching career that you might have done differently or changed Uh, that's a good question um I'll I'll tell you guys this Uh, I've always prided myself in doing the right thing um in this business and I can't say that's true about everybody in this business it's a it's a it's a it's a very cutthroat business and a lot of guys will tell you that but I I allowed myself uh, at one point when I was in Tennessee uh, to get caught up in something I I regret I still regret it but uh, the ownership there uh, Amy Adams Strunk and her family came in and and told me I was going to be the head coach in 2016 uh, before they went through the the Rooney rule and so I sat there knowing I was the head coach in 16 as they went through this fake hiring process, knowing I knowing a lot of the coaches that they were interviewing, knowing how much they prepared to go through those interviews, knowing that, that everything they could do and they had no chance of getting that job. And actually the GM, John Robinson, he was in on the interview with me. He, he had no idea why he's interviewing me, that I have the job already. And I feel, you know, I regret that's because I pride myself in my, my kids first that they do the right thing. And I always said that to the players and here I am the head guy not doing it. And I've regretted that since then. It was a wrong thing to do. I, I'm sorry I did that, um, but it was not the way to go about it. Should have interviewed like everybody else and got hired because of the interview, not not early on. So that's, that's probably my biggest regret. Predictably, the Titans have denied that it was a sham interview process, but Malarkey's remarks, because when I first saw his quote, I thought, and just assumed incorrectly, as I often do, that there was a specific conversation that drew this out of malarkey, not just a very general, hey, do you have any regrets? And off he went. But to me, that was incredibly striking, and it does open the door 
for a real conversation about whether or not the Titans did know that they were hiring Mike Malarkey before they engaged in the other interviews. They just checked the boxes. And as I said earlier today on Twitter, how many other coaches over the past 20 years, if they were being honest, if they dared to tell the truth, would tell the same story Mike Malarkey told Shereen? Well, and and that's the thing, Mike. This does feel something like a smoking gun. But it was obvious when they're asking him this question and he gets done telling the story, they actually had no idea what he had just said, like how newsworthy that was because they said, that's a touching story and we appreciate you sharing that. And then they went on to something else. And I just checked a few minutes ago, it's got 2,355 views. So for two years, we never heard anything about this Mike Malarkey interview. It was kind of buried and now it's come to light and I don't know how they found it, but maybe they just did some search and it came up. But it obviously to me, Mike, and you know better than I do because because you're the attorney, but it does feel like something of a smoking gun. The four candidates they interviewed that year were Terrell Austin, Doug Marone, Ray Horton, and Mike Malarkey. And obviously Malarkey had the job before the other candidates interview. So they were sham interviews. I mean, they have, they have what shows that it was a sham interview, which if you go back in history, you called it a sham interview at the time. Now we have evidence that it certainly was a sham interview. And this is where it gets a little bit complicated because if I had to throw a dart and guess on how the lawyer representing the three plaintiffs now in this case became aware of the Malarkey comments, if I had to just make a wild guess, I would say that Malarkey made someone aware of it. Yeah. Because when you listen to how earnest he was in his explanation, he wanted to make this right. So once the Brian Flores lawsuit is filed, Here's an opportunity to make it right. Here's a mechanism to make it right. Here's a way to go right to the lawyers and say, hey, look, you guys are talking about sham interviews. You you haven't even heard the half of it. I can tell you about a sham interview because I was involved in it and I knew about it. And here you go. And then Ray Horton, who, when we look back at the stories from the time, and Shereen, I got to give you credit. You got a better memory than me. I didn't even think of this. (laughs) At the time, there were stories that Ray Horton was insulted. He denied it. He left the Titans for the Browns in 2016 because he thought he wasn't given a fair consideration to become the head coach. He had been a member of the coaching staff there. And here's the headline. January 18, 2016. The headline, Titans owner knew during search that Malarkey was the guy. Steve Underwood, the former president of the organization with still one of the all-time great mustaches, Somewhere during that process, I think it coalesced for Amy and she had made the decision she already knew Mike. She had a comfort level with Mike, but she wanted to reach out and look around to make sure there was not any other viable candidates for her in terms of our club and where we were going. They didn't interview many people. As you mentioned, it was Tara Lawson, Doug Marone and Ray Horton. But the, the whole purpose of the Rooney rule has been to encourage owners not to make decisions before they engage in interviews, to not rely upon a comfort level. The comfort level is what's problematic when the white owner is inherently comfortable with the white coach. That's one of the reasons why we have this problem in the NFL. So this cuts both ways for Ray Horton, though, because to the extent that Ray Horton is going to say, I didn't know this was a sham interview until after Mike Malarkey said what he said in September of 2020, The response to the Titans is going to be, and this is delicate for them. This cuts both ways for them. Well, no, you should have known it was a sham back in 2016. Even though it wasn't, you should have known it was a sham back then. But we're not saying that it was. But you should have known that it was a sham, and that's when the two-year window started to transpire. And I'm telling you, I've lived that life. I guarantee you that argument is going to be made by the NFL as it relates to the claims made by Ray Horton. Hi, I'm Mike Tirico, and thanks for watching. Make sure to hit subscribe for the latest news and highlights from NBC Sports.